Hello guys, my name is Fazan Jabir and welcome back to another video. If you're a computer science student and looking to find a laptop and you're confused between getting a MacBook or a Windows laptop. So in this video, I'll talk about if you should buy a MacBook Air M1 or you should go for a traditional gaming laptop or a Windows laptop in general. So without further ado, let's get into it. Now let's start with comparing the on paper specs of these laptops that I have here right now. So the laptops we have here right now is Lenovo IdeaPad Gaming 3i with Core i5 10 Gen, 16GB of RAM, 128GB of SSD, 1TB hard drive and a GTX 1650. And the second one is the MacBook Air 2020 which is a base model so it means it has 8GB of RAM. 256 gigabytes of storage and the most iconic M1 chip. Now this was just all the on paper stuff, right? It isn't fair to compare a Core i5 with an M1. Obviously, M1 will always have the higher ground. It's over Anakin! I have the high ground! You underestimate my power! Don't try it! But the point of the video is to compare all the Windows and the gaming laptops out there that have the Ryzen chipset that have the newer improved NVIDIA graphics card or 11 gen Intel chipset. And these Windows and gaming laptops usually start from almost $700, almost. And they have the Core i5 and GTX 1650, 16 GB RAM and all of that stuff. But they are obviously cheaper than the MacBook M1 Air. And the $1000 ones have the newer stuff and the amazing graphical performance. Well now for the MacBook Air. With the release of the newer MacBook Air M2, the M1 is still sold at $1000 and M2 is at $1200, which is a little expensive and really hard to recommend to anyone. But M1 is still bang for the buck and they both aren't that far apart because M2 has just a changed chassis and a different display and but the performance wise they both are quite similar and M1 is still a good machine and right now if you still go ahead and buy it it's a really good option for anyone. But now let's compare the practicality and daily user of both of the systems starting with the MacBooks. Now as I said it has been almost two years since the MacBook M1 was released and in these two years many applications have now been made native to the ARM chipset and some of them no longer requires Rosetta to be, to be translating those applications. So for your coding needs, Android Studio, VS Code, Unity, Unreal and Blender, Blender doesn't require coding but still, these applications are the main ones that mostly people use and these are made native for the M1 chipsets and even the ones that are like Java and C++ and all of the others that are native to the M1 chipset, they still run really smoothly on the M1 systems. Talking about some advantages of having a MacBook is the greatest battery life ever. Like this thing never runs out of juice and it's absolutely amazing. You will get through your whole day, your whole day at university with this laptop without having to bring your charger with you. And even if you want to bring your charger, man, come on. Comparing it with a gaming laptop charger or a Windows charger, man, it's really, really small and really easy to have it in your bag. You just have to put your laptop in a sleeve, have your charger with you, and that's it. But there might be a, like this, a small problem that is the ports, but uh, it can be easily be fixed with a USB hub, or you can just go for a really cheap, um, USB-C to USB dongle and you can like connect your wireless mouse with it. However, this one problem, there's the RAM that is baked in on the chipset. Now you can't change your RAM, so you're stuck with the one you buy. I would really recommend going for a 16 GB laptop because it future proofs your laptop, right? You can use it for four years and the years going on if you don't want to change your laptop. But yeah, 16 GB model is good, but eight gigabyte model also works. I'm not saying that 8 GB RAM model wouldn't work and it isn't good but it, it is also good but just for the sake of future proofing and getting that extra performance 16 GB one works but like comparing it 
to my windows laptop my limp windows laptop when it's like idle not doing anything it still takes up 8 gb ram for no reason out of my 16 gb ram so it it's really not that efficient so the operating system of the macbook is really efficient so yeah you can uh, just you know rely on an 8 gigabyte model too so you won't have issue and now let's talk about the good old windows laptop this thing is heavy man <laughs> quite heavy precisely whoa this is heavy there's that word again heavy why are things so heavy in the future is there a problem with the earth's gravitational pull what so for a gaming laptop i would recommend people to go for the ryzen chipset because because they are really powerful like i'm not saying that intel chips are bad i do use a core i5 one so yeah i know the pain of having a really slow chipset and really hot one too because intel chips run really hot like hot hot to be really really hot but the ryzen ones are really efficient like they're really good they have good performance and overall they're good chipset and when like merged with the uh, nvidia graphics card they work really well yeah gaming laptops in general there's not much to talk about them yeah you can do anything on that and you will be able to run all of your programs you'll be able to code you'll you'll be able to use that system for the next four years if you like don't get annoyed by the battery life which really sucks to be honest and yeah that leads to the point of battery life because it sucks it's 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 the worst because comparing it to a macbook it's just bad why because whenever i start my laptop with a hundred percent battery it just goes down to 50 percent like like 30 minutes the maximum battery backup that i get from my gaming laptop is like three and a half hours like three hours max that's it half and three and a half that's too much of a stretch but yeah, three hours max, that's it for my gaming laptop. But really depends on the one you're buying. Uh, but yeah, for my system, that's a Core i5, a GTX 1650, and the battery life is just, it's like bad, really bad. And you can't like go out without your power adapter. You really need to take that with you. That leads to another point of it being really heavy. And yeah, these things are a little heavy. It's not like, if you're a snowflake then yeah but yeah comparing them to macbooks yes these are cheaper uh, i got my laptop for almost uh 700 dollars it was it had 16 gigabyte of ram as i said on paper the ram the storage that's what i needed right i like to game when i'm bored i like to code as well i don't want to be stuck between the the compatibility of the applications i'm not saying that macbooks are bad they're not compatible with the applications they are but it's just that my preference was gaming and using and coding as well right these two things i really love them so i had to go with a windows laptop because you can't really game on a macbook obviously what do you want to play among us but comparing it with windows laptops the MacBook laptops are always better because they have better performance, they have this, they take smaller space, they're light, and literally they can, they're, little, they're like future proof, right? They're good, they're efficient, they're good systems, and you will get through the day uh, without having to charge them again. So, in that comparison, yes, you should go for a MacBook but if you are someone who likes to game who also likes to code so then yeah go for a windows laptop go for a gaming laptop then yeah just remember you'll be taking that power adapter with you and that heavy system with you and uh, but i don't think that's a big issue uh, being the laptop being heavy same is for the macbooks you don't have that much of storage so you have to take those dongles and all those ssds they both have their pros and cons but my final verdict is obviously going for a macbook although i'm a windows user but going for a macbook if you don't prioritize gaming or anything else like that and if you ever want to do some productivity tasks or some designing tasks such as using photoshop or anything like davinci resolve or 
uh, using any Final Cut Pro, then yeah, that system will literally kill everything that comes in the way. And it's absolutely amazing. So I hope this video was helpful to everyone who is looking to buy a laptop for their degree. And if you're someone who uses either of the system, then comment down below and share your experience. And if you like the video, then give it a thumbs up. And if you loved it, then subscribe, you peeps. And I'll see you guys in the next one.